Hi, I'm Josh Vandre, and here you're looking at the introduction to Ansible for Network Automation. First off, an introduction of who I am. I'm a 20-year network veteran. I've done primarily a lot of stuff in WAN, some stuff in LAN, wireless, data center, firewall, really the whole gambit. I've primarily been in the enterprise space, and I've got a few years of MSP, ISP experience as well. So I've been using automation tools for about four years now. Ansible specifically since it came out with version 2.2, and I've been using Python and the NetMiku library quite extensively as well. As I get into this a little bit more, first and foremost, I want you to take some time and test things before going out and doing things in your production environment. Make sure it's tested, and let's not cause any outages because of automation. So some automation ideas, some examples that I've done, but not limited to just these things. Compliance verification. Anyone with a Cisco ASA environment, you've seen ASA vulnerabilities come out. How do you know if those ASAs are vulnerable or not? I've used Ansible for that. Configuration backups. Yep, there are some other tools out there, such as Rancid, Oxidize, etc. But I have done configuration backups with Ansible because it gave me more flexibility and allowed me to be able to scale to whatever kind of device types I needed. Code upgrades, we all love them, and are just one of those things that has to operationally get done. So working on code upgrades is a very big plus with Ansible. It makes it all the same and very repeatable. And my biggest project with Ansible is I've automated a Greenfield Stadium. A significant number of ports that need to be configured, we've got that all set up, and hopefully this will give you the framework to be able to do that. So why Ansible? I use Ansible because it's an automation framework. I key in on the framework piece. It's not going to give you out-of-the-box batteries include that, hey, I say NTP and I want this server. Nope, you need to give it a syntax and it is an automation framework, not, not a, okay, I'm going to configure this for you, which is kind of nice. I like it. It leverages YAML, which is relatively easy to read, but is very good for machines to work on. You're seeing other configuration items using YAML as well. So YAML as a structure is pretty handy. And it's got a large variety of modules for vendor support. I think at one point there were 51 different modules that I've counted. You'll see that a little bit later in the course here. They have a large drive for automating network CLI-based solutions. Yes, there's brand new stuff out there that's able to use RESTConf or NetConf and other things like that. But when it comes down to it, we all know we need to automate CLI. So Ansible is very good at doing that. And we also talk about RESTConf, NetConf. Ansible supports those. That's kind of nice. The last item here is it's not a programming language. When you take a look and bring a automation framework to someone that hasn't done a programming before or done any other automation, it's easier for them to take a look at it. He or she might be able to then start to write her in his own automation right away. Just to give some light, there are some other popular tools out there for automation. SaltStack is one out there. Python, a lot of people using Python with either Napalm or NetMiku. And then Nornir, which is the next evolution of Python, using Python's NetMiku and Python's Napalm engines. Those both are really being taken to a framework with Nornir. Again, before we get into the introduction of each of the courses, pieces, test. Get some environments, a lab environment or an access switch with a few number of users, something of that nature that you can go ahead and test your playbooks on. Get some experience, get some understanding of that before you get into making crazy changes on your production environment. So what are we going to be covering? In part one, we're going to be going over Ansible terms, the playbook structure. We're going to take a look at the debug module, which is my way of making sure that I know what I'm doing with the automations. I can't say that enough. Use the debug module to see what the structure of the data looks like. And then we'll cover the connection variables. Part two, we're going to look at the playbook management keys. So these are the things at the top of the YAML file that just tell how does the device connect. We'll be updating Ansible config files, so not configs of devices, but the config files that help drive your Ansible environment. And then we're going to show how to gather data from various devices. Part three, we're going to get into variables. How do we set them in tasks and how do we prompt for variables and just general working getting started with variables. Part four, we're going to take variables a little bit further with the folder structure. Folder structure of Ansible, there's a default defined standard there. And there's some important pieces related to inheritance. So how does a variable that's defined at level A versus B versus C play out? And then importing variables from other files. 
Part five, we're starting to talk about Ansible Vault. How do we secure credentials and secure sensitive information within Ansible for use? And then also looking at reusing tasks. So this is a programming principle of dry, don't repeat yourself, that is able to help with your Ansible environment as well. Part six, this is going to be a fun one. It's all about templating. We're going to go ahead and create some configurations. These aren't going to get deployed to devices specifically. Just for your config generation, how can you take a look at that and leverage Ansible? I really like Ansible. It's very quick to the point and gets you data very rapidly. Part seven, we're going to talk about item potency. This is a big piece altogether, so it's got its own chap. Part eight, we get into REST APIs. How do we work with those REST APIs with Ansible? Yes, Ansible can leverage those, so we'll have an entire part just on that. And then on the roles, it's going to be part nine. Roles are how do you be able to assign, hey, I've got this Nexus switch that's in a data center. Okay, we need to know it's a Nexus switch, and it's a leaf switch, so let's go ahead and assign leaf characteristics to it. So how do you be able to make things and assign roles to different devices? And then lastly, we're going to take a look at Meraki modules and look at their config and data gathering in part 10.